Okay, here comes. Um, step four, if you agree. Our generation is misinformed. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely agree, hundred percent. Are you kidding me? That's a massive ultra agree. Um, I do feel our generation is heavily misinformed sometimes because of social media. A lot of the times they just see movements as sort of a trend without looking into them. And I feel that that happened so much. They'll just go with it. And I feel like a lot of the times it makes it very easy for us to kind of just be tailed by the government. And I feel that we need to do hey guys, these are teens, by the way. Just you know. a lot better job at looking into things and really reading into things and starting to take facts over feelings. Yeah, because it's it's 10 times easier to just look at something and accept it as truth than to go and do your research and find um, counterclaims like or what? something that aligns with that. Because if you're just sitting there like scrolling through TikTok and somebody says that this is happening, I mean, like who's gonna, it's not really you educate yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah. I um I strongly agree with both of you guys. Um, you know, I think the reason why I was hesitant about walking over is uh, even though I agree that our generation is misinformed, that doesn't mean that older generations aren't also misinformed, especially, you know, in the form of for like Gen X and the baby boomers. That makes or whatever. sense. Cable news in particular. Not, not a bad answer. Millions to be honest. of Americans now who are tuning in every night to see Tucker Carlson spread misinformation. I don't want to pick on him in particular, but he's an example. Social media is just another example of what's been going on for generations and generations of people just, with all due respect, being too lazy to do their own Tucker research. Tucker Carlson. Just believing what other people tell them. Jesus, that yeah, guy. So man. I completely agree with you guys. But that guy's absolutely unhinged. As a generation, we don't have good examples of politicians and how they uh, disagree and agree anymore. When my parents were younger, they used to watch the politicians in the Senate and the House have like great lively okay, debates this, and come to a conclusion in the act. Researched because of points that he made to me, I would find myself transition. I don't care, next. I disagreed because in 2022, truth is becoming less and less objective and more and more subjective. And there will always be objective truth, but humanity will stray further and further from that, especially when a lie can be attached to an emotion. You see, we are thinking less and less critically and more and more emotionally as a whole. And so when you see something like, for instance, George Floyd, May of 2020, that just strikes your heart. First thing you want to do, go to Instagram, post a black square. Now, what is that doing? I don't quite know. But what it made you feel was like you did something to help that poor fellow who got a terrible thing that happened to him. When I was hearing this question, I was thinking like, is the majority of like my generation, AKA the people I know misinformed? And I would definitely right, say, okay, yeah. Right, I, I feel like the lack of information is like almost as bad as like receiving no, the wrong information. I want to touch up on something you said. I think it is true that social media did change the way we receive Chat, information. Chat, you get mad for this all you want, okay? Most of the time, I don't partake in like social movements like at all ever, like any of them, okay? Jeez. I don't, I don't pick and choose. I'm always, I, I'm ignorant. I don't, I don't watch the news. I don't know what's happening. So I partake in it, nothing, which I don't think I, I'm bad for it. I mean, yeah, I get it. I have a voice, Probably I have a, a platform, but, but I just don't partake in anything. I just don't do it. Whether that is misinformation or the truth, but people have gotten many for that. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't fuck them. That doesn't make us Morons. misinformed because of that. Obviously like, yes, you have social media. It's so much easier to get information, but I don't think because we have social media that automatically makes you misinformed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was good, trying not Thank to you. you. Did Thank you want you. a drink? Um, yeah, please. Pepsi, no, uh, Coke uh, or like Coke or uh, Sprite. I'll get a Sprite if you can. If Sprite, one. okay. Thank you. Oh man. Chat, stop, chat. Chat, stop, 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 stop. Stop hitting the mic. I'm not hitting the mic, am I? My parents influenced my way to movies. Oh, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much, yeah, that's... My parents influenced my way to movies. Thank you. I grew up in a conservative Christian household in Iowa, so I'm very, very well. Uh, Hold up, chat. Chat, look at what my mom cooked. I got salmon, a bread, potato, and some bro uh, broccoli, man. Isn't that looking kind of dank? 
around like conservative politics all the time and my parents have absolutely influenced like not only my morals but my political beliefs through that manner and I think a lot of those teachings actually led me to being more progressive and more liberal over time rather than actually being conservative. Yeah for me it's kind of similar um my dad is Christian but in Vietnam they have this thing where actually like they practice both Buddhism and Christianity from both religions both Buddhism and Christianity it's always taught about like we as a community need to take care of each other we need to respect each other Wait, she's talking about religion. Each other, they're, they're and we need to stuff. create like the best society we can. My parents not like directly telling me like, oh, you should believe this or you should believe that, but just the way that they have taught morals to me and also their own personal experiences have influenced my own beliefs. In Buddhism, it's basically one of the most interesting childhoods out there. I was observant, so I watched my community, and when I saw how th the, Chad, these versions are kind of lame. I'm being honest with you. Like, Chad, Chad, what is a moderates? Chat, what is that? Be. Chat, what is this? Yes, what is that? Pretty straightforward. Middle. In the middle. You say you. Guys, guys, I think it's a meme. I'm a centrist overall. It's that I just don't partake. Okay? I, I just don't partake. Can you tell me, can you tell me I'm a bad person for that? I don't give a shit. Okay? 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 Yeah. I think politics are trash. Okay? And I don't have enough time to spend learning and caring about this shit. So I do nothing, okay? Okay, I do nothing. And you, know what you want me, you can get mad at me for that? I don't give a fuck, dude. Or, I don't um, care. This country functions best when people from all different walks of life, all different political ideologies are able to come together for a greater cause. Uh, I believe that the two party system is a trap I believe that political parties as a concept are antithetical to democracy. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I also just want to add that I think both parties are a lot more radical than they used to be. And I think moderates are helping bridge that gap in between and kind of showing that, you know, you can no. agree with both parties, which can help, especially in you know, Senate and House of Representatives to come up with better policies and to come up with better laws that help our people instead of, you know, the bickering that we see among the, our politicians right now. Um, L, yeah. I just think the problem in America is that we don't have enough political parties. We only have two. And that's the problem. It makes us so divided that we have to pick between the left or the right. Yeah, also I hate this notion that it's always like what's in the middle that's right. I think really we should be looking at- What else is there? Whether it's right or not, not necessarily based upon the fact whether it's right or whether it's yeah, left. What is there? Isn't it just a uh, uh, liberal or like conservative, that's it? Whether it's in the middle, it should be based upon the arguments. It should be based upon the rationalization. I love mm -hmm. your take on that, but nothing can really ever be right because what's right to one person is not yeah. gonna be right. Conservatives and liberals or whatever. I mean, you can look ideologically at both and I can say, well, this is this and this is this, but who's to say which is correct, which is why the problem of parties, I think, can't really be solved by breaking the binary. It's something that is ingrained into us as humans to be team members, to be competitive. Competition is what we are, even when it comes to representing ourselves, leading ourselves and attempting to better ourselves. So having more teams isn't going to fix that. Well, why not just... Yeah, I know that we have NDP, which isn't bad. Uh, is it is NDP bad? I feel like it's not... Eliminate the political party just to achieve, you know, the ability of people to cooperate with each other because George Washington warned of Don't care about this political partisanship. Neither Trump or Biden are good presidents. Wow. Good We're not going to have any progress. All right. I just want to say this one. I just want to say this one. Neither Trump nor Biden were good presidents. True. My family benefited from a lot of President Trump's policies, but basically what I felt was that a president needs to be presidential. And for President Biden, I just think that Personally, he's too old to be president. I do think there needs to be a cutoff limit when someone can be president. Yeah, young people are heavily up unrepresented within our country, the average age of an American. That should be one of the most dumb mistakes I can have ever seen. And it's around 37 years old, whereas people in Congress are generally above the age of 50 on average. So when people kind of point at Biden to be very- There are no, there are no things that you do as a president that have some sort of age prerequisite or age uh, of a problem into doing it. Isn't it just mostly thinking, talking, 
riding and showing up? Who cares if they're old? Like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Like, what? Very old. Trump's also extremely old, too. So if we want to put some type of age limit on that, I think that they're both way too old to be president. And obviously, we need a lot more representation for younger people. Neither of them seem to have been particularly popular. You can say you're dumb, but you have, you have no kind of arguments. You have no kind of arguments. What's the kind of argument? If you don't have, if you don't have, if you don't have a problem, like like medically or whatever, the fuck, or you don't have things that, that affect your thoughts that are like problems or mental illnesses or whatever that, that would that would make it bad, you're chilling. One of you see, I was people say it's a bad thing, but old people are smarter. Um, the ignorance. I mean, chat is just not. Chat doesn't get what. Talk, things have been bad. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a fucking twenty minutes. You're dumb. You're dumbass. Shut up, bitch. I mean, you guys are not even giving arguments. Zero cutting a response and may. Um, Biden can't think or talk. You lose touch with the current generation. You act like you like you have to be. Yeah, you have to be in touch with the current generation. It's a disaster. Current generation is a fucking disaster. I don't give a fuck if, if, if they're not in, in touch. Fuck them. Uh, even within their own parties. Everybody's fucking brain dead. What the fuck were we losing? I wouldn't listen to myself. I wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to myself. Like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Turn it, fuck him. Trump to a lesser extent. Well, well, Trump was extremely popular amongst his party, whereas Biden has actually lost a lot of that popularity throughout time, as people have seen him throughout his presidency. I think there were a lot of things on both the Republican and Democratic side in which these uh, particular figures led to like a, a larger amount of polarization amongst the public. Huh? I don't like Trump because of a lot of the racist things that he has said. And if you're out making jokes about, oh, I'm going to build a wall. And even if it was serious, that's not something to joke about. And it seems like it's very targeted towards one specific group. Joe Biden has a much stricter racist history than Donald Trump ever has, and in my opinion, ever will have. During the 2019 presidential cycle, Joe Biden said, if you even think about voting for anybody other than me, you ain't black. And when I learned about the atrocities that the Democrat Party had done, not just to the world and to America, but to my race specifically, it told me something that I could never, in my opinion, be a Democrat, and it would be, it would take a lot to even vote for one. And on top of that, back in the 80s, he was responsible for, as he said, wrote the dang bill, the Clinton crime bill, which was responsible for throwing a lot of people that look like us in prison. This guy is weird. I mean, within your statement, you didn't necessarily acknowledge any of the racist history in relation to Trump as well. So if we're only gonna put eyes on like either Trump or Biden, I see that not necessarily to be like the most consistent framework for looking at this. Of course, and I understand why you say that, but she didn't actually provide any examples of a history. She provided a media mismanagement of what he said in 2015 slash 16, talking about immigration. But every time Trump tries to talk about this, they call him a racist and a xenophobe. I come from a um, family that is of immigrants. My grandparents don't speak English and they are from Mexico and a lot of the time people were bashing Trump for that being a racist thing he's trying to keep them out but he's only trying to keep the criminal individuals such as you know drug lords or people sending drugs to our country at the same time though it's sort of like disingenuous to say that you know how can you have a good get okay, 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 okay. this is my take it may be bad how can you have a good a good president how can you have the best possible president Right in the current system and how it works to get there, how is it even possible? Literally, how is it possible to get an actual very good to get most the most qualified with how how pay to win and stupid it is? You can't. You know, the immigration policies are just keeping the bad people out because at the same time it's almost impossible for most people to emigrate to the United States legally. Let that sink in. Let that sink in, okay? I guess this is nothing against Trump or any party. I don't, I don't, politics, I don't give a fuck about them, okay? But hold on, this, this, this is a question, this is a question. Let that sink in, let that sink in. Out of, out of probably crazy amount of people, candidates, people that went to school, people that have degrees, people, people that know shit, people that, people that, are, that are qualified or could be qualified, out of all people, okay? We, America had Trump as president. I, I, th I think it, I think, it's, it's, it doesn't mean against them. I, I'm just saying it. It, it. I think I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. That's not that's not even a thing against them though. Capitalism. It's some business rich guy who had not much to do with politics at all, and who I don't think has a massive ultra background in politics. Maybe a little bit here and there, but compared to other people, fuck no. 
and he got, and he, and he got president. Will always be more superior than the public sector in almost like 90% of things in this country. Billionaires have, obviously they have a lot of money, but what I see is that billionaires are using their money for philanthropy. They don't want to pay taxes, I see that, because they just feel like if the government takes their money, they're not going to do good with the money. A great example would be Amazon. I mean, it has revolutionized the way we shop. I think the key word in the prompt is billionaires can, uh, you know, affect positive change better than the government. I don't think it's a, like, guarantee that they will, because I think there are certain instances of billionaires doing good with their money. But then there are also, you know, I know you mentioned Jeff Bezos, but... So naive, dude. How do you think they, they, they became billionaires, dude? How did they became there, dude? They're probably just multi ultra millionaires, dude, who did everything that they could to change things, right? In a way to make more money. You think, you, you think that on the way up to get a billionaire, they try to change the laws or fucking lobby shit in order to make, to make less money on the way up? So delusional. So delusional. He also um, often doesn't use his money for good because there are many reports of Amazon employees being mistreated. Helicopter above me? Denied breaks and, you know, issues where it's like, come on, you have all that money. Do you need, like, so much more from, like, cutting corners like that? These billionaires can do fantastic things, but I also understand that government regulations, taxes, and various other things occupy their time. I don't believe billionaires should be heavily taxed. I believe the tax cuts we had in 2018 were some of the best things we saw for our economy. I completely would agree with you that we shouldn't be taxing billionaires at such a high rate. If you tax billionaires, they would respond by increasing the prices of goods and services. I think the reason why everything is so expensive is inflation. But in the past, when inflation was low, there were times where things were very expensive. And that is because of the fact that we have high corporate tax rates in some states. Well, so I, I respectfully dis- Who do you think, who did these guys think make the laws and, and change things? You think, did these guys think that the, that the politicians just wake up one day, right? And say, I'm gonna change the world and make this law. Fuck no. And he's lobbied out the wazoo. Companies pay for this shit. Who, who do you think funds the campaigns of the people that get in these positions? The, mother, the motherfucking companies that these benefits. Like, what the fuck? These people are delusional. I disagree the with delusional. Uh, the idea that taxing billionaires or specifically leaving billionaires untaxed is beneficial to the American economy because uh, the... Um, most like prosperous uh, era for the American economy was the 1950s, the post-war economic miracle. That was when billionaires were being taxed at a rate of 90%. And this isn't socialism or anything. This was a buy the product, you. But that's how it works. It's, it's capitalism. You don't have any other choice. You buy whatever's best for you. And that's what you should always do. You buy the best product you can afford at the best price. And you're probably fueling some corporate fucking dog shit greed. That also pays for fucking laws to be changed that are probably bad for you. Okay, that's just how the system is. What are you gonna do about it? You gonna cry? A, un, in, under American capitalism, under a Republican president, Dwight Eisenhower. And, and, and this was right after a fantastic, uh, I hate to say fantastic war, but it was a fantastic war for us in which we got so much American pride and that Republican president, Dwight D. Dwight D. Eisenhower, then utilized that money that he taxed from those billionaires to create a great system, which is the, inter, inter, the interstate system, which is a fantastic thing that connects our country. But unfortunately, the government isn't really investing money the guy said, what? After a fantastic, uh, I hate to say fantastic war, but it was a fantastic war for us in which after American capitalism under a Republican president, Dwight Eisenhower. And, and, and this was right after a fantastic, uh, I hate to say fantastic war, but it was a fantastic war for us in which we got so much American pride and that Republican president, Dwight D. Dwight D. Eisenhower, then utilized that money that he taxed from those billionaires to create a great system, which is the, inter, inter, the interstate system, which is a fantastic thing that connects our country. But unfortunately, the government isn't really investing money Money and things like that anymore. It's investing money in weird programs and things that the average American isn't going to benefit from. So billionaires do have a lot of money and a lot of influence in order to do good with America. Yeah, here's a quick answer. Billionaires can solve the problems. Billionaires can solve the problems better than the government. Answer is no. Billionaires are the. I, I think a lot of them. Okay, 
are, are causing the problems. Economy, but nowhere near deliberately. The, the ability of the government. Deliberately. We're talking about billions of dollars. The government has access to trillions of dollars on a federal scale, like yearly speaking. Yeah, in some circumstances, like more Cuban, they absolutely can do those things. It doesn't anywhere near compare to the level of access of healthcare that they do have in these other countries. And it, it doesn't compare to the damage that will happen to the average American when the government decides to pull trillions of dollars out of nowhere. Don't say it like me. Guys, as I mean, a billionaire, people that have companies and shit. Billionaires that are from a, like a company, a, a, a business, a, co a, a corporate, because they do things that benefit the, 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 their company, that, that fucks the system. As an individual, I, I have no power in any of this shit. You, you, you think I, I, I write checks to fucking dumbass uh, people in suits? Fuck no, I don't give a shit. Dude. Because we have to remind ourselves the government makes nothing. Hell the government nah, takes from bitch. every single citizen standing in this room that pays taxes each and every day, including state governments and federal governments. They start throwing trillions at random things like, I don't know, health care for everybody, which can work for a country that's the size of maybe South Carolina, but will not work for the size of our country. Yeah, I would say that's because our government actually like mismanages the money comparative to other nations. We oh, spend a lot in terms of our per capita on health care, like more than Hold other up. countries, yet they actually have better. Hold up. Oh, here's, a, here's, a good, here's a good take. Let's say you have an old company, okay? And you do things to make money, like like you, you make you, you you dig up oil or something like that, right? And you you are destroying, right? Bi like dozens of billions of dollars of, of of things around it, right? When you made when you made like a trillion dollars off of oil, and you go like, guys, I'm gonna be part of the solution. I'm putting twenty billion dollars in in helping the environment, my brother. You are solving an infinitely small part of the problem you are actively causing. Not in the past, that you are still causing. You're not helping shit. You're not doing anything. Their health outcomes and they cover <laughs> like, what people. The fuck? So I do think there are lots of things that the United States could do better comparative to other countries. We can learn a lot more from those other countries. And yet we don't do that because of this idea of American exceptionalism. When you were talking about like how it's much easier to like manage like a country that's smaller, that's completely true. Like whatever the national government does doesn't really affect me. And that's why like for me, I'm a very strong participant. I don't care. What did I say? So we out of touch. Well, no shit. Out of touch. Useless. They're all old and shit. Of course, out of touch. What? The Supreme Court is full of older people. With yeah, that's it. That's just yes. I'm hopeful about the future of this country. Oh, hell no. Nah. Fuck no. Oh, here in the United States, we have no the ability way. and the opportunity to be the best nation in the world and live up to the, all the ideals that we grew up with and thought that we had. Look at all of us. We're willing to have a conversation, whereas years ago, we might not have sat down. We might have hated each other for having different types of beliefs. So I really think that shows the type of growth potential that the United States has in particular. Um, I personally think I have a great future in this country, especially being a woman because I can sit here and wear what I want, say what I want, and have just as many rights and equal facilities as you do as in other countries. That's not awarded to all women or even all people. And I feel that. Delusional, I idealist, fucking uh, uh, utopia Andes up in this bitch. Our country gives Evil, us uh, some of the most mind. privilege in the world. So for me right now, I live a great life. I have a house, I have a cat, I have two dogs, Don't and it's great. <laughs> uh, but I feel like things could always be better, you know? And I think that's what I like about this country. What about what you said about everything? Is that we have a government where we can actively participate in and we can make the changes that we want to see. I think that... Unless you have money and you're loaded and you're going hard, you're, you're, that's just getting relevant. I am very scared for my future. I grew up too. Money is the only thing that matters. It's a capitalistic system. Money is the only thing that matters. It's the most pay to win thing. You... Dude, 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 okay. Let me put this in a way you can understand this, okay? If the politics and the real life, this, this is something that, 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 that Riffle taught me, okay? If, 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 if politics or real life was a video game with how pay to win these things are, not a singular person would play the game. Nobody. Nobody would ever log in. It'd be the most boring ass trash game out there. It'd be dog shit. That's how bad it would, it, it would be. That's just how it is. Two hours away from a Ku Klux Klan headquarters, if that tells you anything about where I grew up, there's probably less than the amount of fingers I have on my hands of people of color in my school. There was a lot of racial heat that I got growing up and it forced me to grow up a lot faster than I thought that I'd have to. If you look up Harrison, Arkansas, it's known as one of the most racist cities 
in America and you can see if you're on TikTok and you see we visited the most racist city in America, that's going to be Harrison, Arkansas. My mother is white, but whenever my mom would drive through Harrison when we were going somewhere, she would put a blanket over my crib while we were in that city just because she felt unsafe for me. And whenever I, I hosted the Black Lives Matter protest, a lot of members from that Ku Klux Klan organization in Harrison were making groups saying that they were gonna come up and harass us and harm us. And it's a very scary thing because you read about the Ku Klux Klan in history books, it's a very different thing to hear them personally tweeting out to you that they are gonna come and that they are gonna harm you. As much as our country is growing, I'm also not going to invalidate the fact that there is a lot of issues that are still stemmed very deep in a lot of people's brains that are still being acted out upon and causing me to feel uncomfortable to live in my country. As a black woman, I just feel like being anywhere in the world, it's not just America. There will always be somebody who does not like a person of color and there will always- I'm back with you. I think we're straying away from the, from the, from the, the question. I'm going to go next. Most of my friends have the same political beliefs as I do. That's kind of a bad question, though. I'm okay with fuck about that. I came from a very conservative and Republican. My answer is uh, no. No. And I don't care about it. I don't, it's not a conversation. It's never a problem. Whether they think about these political things, doesn't affect anybody. If you care about this shit, you're a fucking moron. In city and state in Arkansas, and I grew up around a lot of people who did not have the same beliefs as me at all. And a lot of the people that I would try to keep in my circle who did have different beliefs were blasting me on private stories and stuff like that and making me feel like I was dumb. Uh, it's really hard I'm for me eating. to make friends that are from the liberal side as immediately they hear or even see my um, political views or even my religion, they immediately try to shut me down. They send me death threats. They put stuff in my bag saying they're gonna kill me. They've um, poured paint in my bag and shaken it up. When COVID happened and things were starting to shut down and the incident with George Floyd happened, everybody started looking through everyone's profiles, their family's profiles, especially when these protests were going on. And there was a picture of my dad and my family, all of us together, and he was wearing a Trump shirt. I was getting a lot of death threats, a lot of um, encouraging me to commit suicide, um, threatening to do unspeakable things to me and my family, Jesus. threatening to find my address and hurt them. I could, in fact, say almost all of them were liberals. It makes it really, really hard because the minute that you're different from them, at least in my experience, they shut you down immediately. So I just kind of close myself off and I stay friends with the people that are going to respect me and respect my views. Uh, when I came out publicly as a conservative in 2018, it was probably one of the hardest years I've ever went through. At my school, having my opinions while looking like I did, was a, a non-starter. I received so many obviously negative messages. They called me some terrible things, which I don't even think I can Man, say on this here. Chat, um, but oh, this chat in full chat war. Holy. All the phrases that you've heard, you know, get thrown at black conservatives simply for having their ideas and make it look like I'm so- Guys, 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 I don't give a fuck what party it's for. I don't give a shit, okay? I don't give a fuck what party that, that the message it's from. If you, if you wear fucking clothing with political statements, that is like some fucking sub-zero glacial IQ shit. I think it's so stupid. What a dumb shit to do. I'm sorry, man. That's my some thing, sort man. Of slave simply for having my opinions, making it seem like I can't think for myself because I am black, not understanding that they're perpetuating the exact same racism that they think they're fighting against by calling me those words. I'm from Thousand Oaks, California. And I've met people who are like pretty hardcore conservatives. I feel like all of us, when we, my friends, when we come and have these discussions, we all just want what's best for this country. And of course, we all have our own ideas of how to achieve that. But in the end, we want a world that everyone can benefit from. And of course, unless you are able to discuss with other people your different opinions with things, and talk about the reasons why you believe certain ways, 
you can't make any progress with our country. I, uh, I strongly agree. Um, and so personally, I'm from New Jersey. You can probably figure out I have a predominantly left-leaning uh, friend group. Sure. That was, I never I really actually enjoyed the video, to be honest. I, it's, I think I skipped properly through it. I feel through like it. at the end of the day, you shouldn't be exclusively talking about politics with the people you're friends with. Especially, it's concerning to me it was that, okay. you know, based on recent studies, a growing plurality of Americans simply refuse to be friends Friends. This guy tries a bit too hard to like put strong words in his in his dialogue. I feel like because it's that it doesn't achieve anything. A growing plurality of Americans simply refuse to be friends with people who are of different political affiliations from them. That, if anything, says, says very concerning things about our country. Uh, especially because you know that. You're not gonna say says you, okay? I could say all this. He said if I were to say this, all this, I, I would say. I'd say some bullshit, and then boom, that's it. I, I talked about all the things he said. Boom, done, instantly.